Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our final, our last SSN meeting of the year, uh, 2020. Wow. <laughs> What else can we say except for 2020? Wow. Um, <laughs> for those who uh, are new, if this is your first meeting, my name is Tron LePet. I'm the uh, lead here of the Student Success Network. Uh, we have a jam-packed day. Uh, but in the meantime, while you're coming in, please do us a favor. Uh, drop something in the chat if you're happy that 2020 is over. Can we get a few? W-H-E-W, -E can we get some emojis? Um, and also, uh, shout out your school. Where are you from? What year are you graduating? We want to know. Is anyone in here class of 2021? Okay, there we go, phew, I like those hues. I am so over 2020. <laughs> um, so we're gonna get started in just a second. I'll give you a few more seconds to uh, load that chat up. We wanna see, um, there we go, class of 2021. Congratulations, Blanche Ely's in the house, ATC. Great, great. Class of 2023. There's something special about 2023. That Jordan number, right? That old Jordan concept, 23, 21. There's something special about you too. And 22, you as well. Um, all right. So uh, continue dropping that in the chat. We want to know who's here with us. Uh, let me say this right now. Um, we have a major major announcement coming up towards the end. That's right. We're going to hold it towards the end. That's right. Radio tease. We have a major announcement coming up in the end. It's referring, it's regarding money and a lot of it, uh, more than we've ever talked about in any of our SSN meetings, in the history of SSN meetings, this takes the cake. So please, everyone stay around. It is a major money opportunity announcement, and I'm not kidding, all right, I'm not kidding. Um, all right, so we've had an opportunity to throw some names in the chat, thank you very much. Okay, we got another class of 2021. Let's jump right into uh, introductions. We have a very special meeting planned for you this afternoon. Uh, three really special guests are here with us. Each is going to take a few minutes to tell you their story, and I promise it will not disappoint. You'll be on the edge of your seat. Um, also, uh, we'll go over some racial equity homework. Remember, we are going to have Yawanda go over her homework and then open it up to discussion. So Yawanda, get ready because uh, shortly you'll be on. Uh, we also have Shaba Kojo, one of our special guests, um, is going to help facilitate our Social Justice Advisory Council. And uh, Shaba's going to give you a little breakdown about who he is, what he stands for. But uh, trust me, you will enjoy the conversation, especially if this is something that you're interested in. In, okay. Um, we'll also have a progress update from uh, two students, two student-led projects, uh, the HALT project by Sarah Wesner and a peer friend network, uh, which is coming from Layla Melvin. So we're going to get some updates on that. And then at the end, we have some announcements, YouTuber conference, uh, that Google scholarship thing. Yeah, you, you want to stay for that. I promise you, <laughs> you want to stay for that. Um, HBCU College Fair, FAFSA in Broward, and then other opportunities with B2L. So we have a lot coming. We have a lot to discuss. Uh, there's still time. If you know friends who need to join, tell them, get on board, because we're about to get started, and we don't want them to miss out on the information. All right. So I hope everyone's having a great day. Uh, in order to help assist us with communicating, uh, we have a very special announcement, and that is, finally, I think we have Remind Down Pat. I think we do. Um, so take your phone out now. Everybody take your phone out. Everyone who's on this meeting, take your phones. If you're on your phone, go to Remind. If you have the Remind app, go to Remind right this second. Go to Remind right this second, okay? Uh, we are going to have you uh, add yourselves to our Remind class. And I'm gonna lean on my good buddy and friend and colleague and team member, uh, Carolina Lopez, to go through this process here. Um, I know the process, but Carolina knows it a little bit better than I. Uh, so we'll, we'll tag team it together if we need to. Carolina, are you available? Absolutely. Awesome. All right, so everyone has their phones out, everyone has Remind. And so once you're in there, the only thing you have to do is we're gonna look for the class titled Bridge, the number two, Life SFL. I'm gonna put it in the chat box. Can everyone see it on the chat box? Carolina, just so you know, I can see it in the chat box. Excellent. Yes, we can see it. Thank Excellent. you. So once you're in there, all you have to do is request access. And then as soon as we start getting the requests, we'll start approving them. Um, what are you all seeing right now? Uh, 
for Hi. Yes, go um, for it. Sorry, this is Haley. I just wanted to ask, I am not sure where to put this in. I have the app and typically there's an option to join the class and then there's an at symbol and a code, but this, uh, the bridge to life SFL is too long. Okay, let's do this. Um, normally you put in uh, join a class, there's a little plus sign. And actually Colleen just saved the day, it's at B2L SFL, that's a short code. And the official name is Bridge to Life South Florida. So I'm gonna do this with you. Yep, and, and Caroline, I'm gonna jump in really quick if you don't mind. So Haley, uh, yeah, right where that join class is, where it says join class, you can put B2L SFL and that should allow you to join our class. Oh, someone said, Haley just joined. All right, it's working. It's working. We have power, mission, mission go, everything go. Um, so right, yeah, so join class and then put B2L SFL. If we could put that in the chat one more time so everyone sees it. And um, yes, please join. Awesome, it's working. Carolina, back to you. No, that's it. So we have one, we have 30 plus people on this call. So we're waiting to see how many of you are in. Once you have officially joined, if you could put on the chat that you are in, just like Haley. And for those that don't have Remind on their phone, uh, you can also simply text the number 81010. So go to your text and open up the uh, Compose and text the number 81010 and then type uh, and then you'll send a message to 81010 and the message is going to be at symbol B2L SFL. And I see people are joining. So that's awesome. So again, if you don't have Remind, go to your, go to your phone, open up your Compose chat, type the number 81010. That's the number you're going to text a message to. And then the code is at B2L SFL. You'll send that and you'll join as well. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining. We're going to continue right along with the program, but we do want you to pass that code along to your friends. Um, you know, I'm thinking of a challenge, Colleen. I'm thinking of a challenge. Maybe we could have some kind of remind challenge. We'll talk about it later and see if it makes sense. All right, everybody. So we're moving right along. We have special guests last month. You heard from David Watkins, uh, the director of equity last month. And I mean, he gave us so much to think about, right? So much to chew on. Um, well, this week, we're going to hear from some more amazing speakers. Each speaker is going to be given five minutes uh, and can take a few questions. They're here to help you. Remember, this is an opportunity to network. Uh, get your questions out there um, and, and really just get exposed to as many different conversations and topics as possible. These speakers are here for you. They're taking time out of their day for you. So thank you very much to our speakers who are on. And we're going to start with the first one. Uh, we're going to start with Paul Martin. You have heard him speak on the History Maker call. Paul is simply amazing. Uh, he is a Miami native, a Harvard grad, an MIT alum who received scholarships to pave the way, help pave the way. Um, so he has a background in tech and he is devoted to helping you find your way to a better future. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to give the floor over to Paul Martin. And Paul, please, you have the floor. You have five minutes and then we'll follow up with any Q&A. So Paul, the floor is yours. You bet. All right. Thanks so much, Tron. And um, I really appreciate the invite to come and, and join this group. It's such a meaningful practice to be able to help you know, students and, and, and help them to really kind of understand their potential. So again, I'm, I'm Paul Martin. I'm actually a first generation college graduate. I went to school in Highland Miami Lakes uh, across the border, as they say, around our parts in Miami-Dade County. And in that process, you know, I really struggled to figure out the financial aid process on my own my, with my family not being able to um, help me pay for all of college. I really had to dig deep and understand, you know, what my potential was as I was aiming high at some pretty competitive co colleges, but at the same time worried about the financing piece. So, you know, I was able to figure it out on my own, did the FAFSA, did, you know, the other applications necessary. And in that process got scholarships to both Harvard and then I did my master's at MIT several years later on a full, full scholarship. And so, you know, through that process, I really connected with the fact that, that the financial piece of higher education, if you're interested in going to college, is, or even a sec any secondary institution, is an important component for most of us. And so I've dedicated now to supporting and working with Broward schools, and hopefully some, at some point Miami-Dade schools, to bring an education series around how to really think about financing in a smart way 
your education, maximizing the money you can get so that you can actually achieve to your highest potential and, and realize your college dream because I don't want anyone um, in our schools to undermatch and not to go to their fullest potential and where they think they belong and where they rightfully belong, whether you're first generation, whether your parents are immigrants, whether you are, you know, your parents went to college, we all deserve a higher education that will un open and unlock opportunities. And so my focus is really working with um, students to help them understand what that means for them and provide financial education around starting with college finance, but of course, moving into other parts of your life and thinking ahead in terms of how do you set yourself up and change financial attitudes toward money and really think about you know, what it is that you wanna achieve and what wealth means for you. As part of that process, I currently um, am president of the first generation Harvard alumni and first generation alumni of MIT. And those are two alumni subgroups at those universities focused on inviting alumni who are the first and their families to graduate to create a safe space and community for us to be able to navigate being first in our career, first in a lot of areas of our life so that we are um, more empowered to achieve our full uh, potential. And importantly, a big part of what we do is mentorship back to college students. So we have formal mentorship programs at both universities, which allow for students to see reflection of their future potential in the alumni that were able to achieve uh, their college dream, graduate and be successful. So that's what I, I, I hope to bring to B2L in a, in a nutshell and to every student here is the ability to really be a reflection back on your potential and to realize that, you know, regardless of what your current financial situation is, there's a way to figure out and to, and to work with your counselors and, and community leaders to figure out a way to achieve what you want to do for college and beyond and, and find the financial means to do that. So I'm really excited to be part of this. I look forward to uh, meeting as many people as possible. And of course, um, hearing from these other great leaders that we have on the call today. Thank you so much. Paul, thank you so much. And I'll just let everybody know, Paul is super duper accessible. Um, you, you would think somebody with, with uh, you know, his schedule and, and endeavors uh, wouldn't be as accessible as he's been, but he's been quite accommodating. Paul, thank you so much. And students, just one thing to think about. I'm going to open the floor to Q&A in just a second here, but one thing to think about. So, of course, Paul's available from a mentorship standpoint, a guidance standpoint, right? A helper, assistance, whatever, a resource. But also think about uh, the, the, uh, the mentoring component, right? Think about his, um, his business to a certain extent, you know, and, and using that as an example or a template of, uh, you know, things that you can do for your projects. Remember, we're pushing you day in and day out, month in and month out to work on student-led projects, which we're gonna talk about in a second. And that's gonna tie into a big announcement at the end. I'm, I'm gonna keep pushing this. We've never had something like this mentioned in B2O before. Um, it, it's not B2O led, but we are promoting the heck out of it because it ties into what we've been doing with projects. So anyway, um, any questions for Paul Martin before we move on to the next speaker? Any questions, comments, concerns, please unmute your mic. We want to hear from you directly. So I'll open the floor. I'll yield about five seconds. Any questions? It sounds like someone's unmuted, so I want, I want to give you the opportunity to ask. No questions? Okay, Does anyone, did anyone put anything in the chat? Let me double check the chat really quick. Let's see. Anyone put anything in the chat? I just want to make sure this, this is an opportunity to connect All right, and network. Okay, let's see. Anything in the chat? No? Nope. Okay. Actually, All right, well, I do have a question. Yeah, go for it, Haley. Go for it. Do you have any advice for... Um, current seniors right now because I know we're kind of at the end of applications and so we're switching over to more so looking for scholarships. Any advice? Yeah, absolutely. I think there are a couple of key components is, you know, the majority of your, your money will, will potentially be coming from your school. So if your situation has changed because of COVID and I know everyone's been affected by it, remember that you should be reaching out to financial aid offices and asking what that appeal process looks like if, if, if you need to do that. Um, and, and I always say, you know, ask for what you want and ask for what you need. And so when you get those initial award letters, make sure you go back and um, compare what you get and, and see where there might be room for colleges to be more generous because they really want to be more generous. Um, and then, of course, 
you know, um, as you're, you pass the actual uh, FAFSA application, hopefully at this point, yes, definitely turn your attention to private scholarships, especially local and community-based are gonna be the most accessible to you. The national ones are more competitive, but think locally, there's a thousand dollars here, $500 here, those add up and can make the difference in terms of the college you're able to access. Thank you. you got Thank you, Haley, for the question. Thank you, Paul, for the response. Any other questions for Paul? Okay, so we will move forward to the next speaker, the next presenter. Um, and just to echo uh, what Paul said, yes, there are tons of scholarships out there, private scholarships. Um, and again, think about the brands that you use every day, right? Nike, Reebok, Adidas, Sunkiss, Sprite, whatever the case may be. A lot of those companies also have scholarships. Give it a shot. You never know what will happen. Next up, we're going to hear from Dr. Robert Morris. Um, I've heard uh, this good man speak um, a few times and uh, get ready. Uh, he's going to blow you away when it comes to uh, things involving American history through an African lens, African American lens as well. And he also has, uh, he's also has amazing educational credentials. He's devoted to the community and is here to help you. Uh, Dr. Morris, uh, good afternoon. Number one, just want to make sure that you are unmuted. I am, sir. Great. Awesome. Awesome. So thank you very much for uh, joining us today. Um, the last time I heard you speak was at a uh, webinar that took place maybe about a month ago. And um, I invited a bunch of students from the uh, Black Student Union. I encouraged them to sign up for that, for that uh, webinar. And I mean, you, you really just blew us away with your perspective on, um, you know, the, the Black plight here in America and things of that nature. So <laughs> tell us, um, tell us what, why you took the path. This is a question I have for you. Tell us why you took the path that you did and how that and how the way you teach history is helping change lives. Why did you take the path that you did? How did you get to, to where you're at now? And, um, and how that path and what you teach, right? History, how is that helping change lives? Okay, can you see me? Because I'm not sure if my video working or not. So I just wanna make yep, sure. Yep, see it, we see it. We see it okay, clear. so um, good afternoon to you. Um, once again, it's definitely an honor and a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, my name is Dr. Morris, I'm definitely a I call myself a lifetime change maker, um, and I have to, you know, take it all the way back to the beginning. Of I am a lifetime member of the NAACP, where my godmother is. I'm standing on her shoulders, as she was a change maker who was a part of the civil rights movement. As her father did the landmark Supreme Court case, Bailey versus Patterson. So she knows people like Martin Luther King, Megar Evers. Um, Fannie Lou Hamer, you talk about leaders in American history. She is one of those people. And of course, as she has passed the torch on to me, and she has charged that it becomes my responsibility to become a change maker and a person to begin to change this community one person at a time. Of course, not just in my current profession as a professor at Briar College, where I you know, teach American history. And in that American history, you know, I always give students quotes from people who are historical people in the period. You know, uh, my life ends once I become silent about things that matter or is living worth dying for. Or, you know, take the word freedom out of, out of your vocabulary if you're not willing to die for it. So using those quotes and using music as a part of history, beginning to use that to teach the next generation of leaders because I think that as my godmother passed the torch on to me, also being a first generation student, going to Colgate University, for, of course, thinking that I was going to major in science, wanted to be an OBGYN, obstetrician, gynecologist, but I knew that God had a different reason and a different passion and vision for my life. And so as I take on this charge to teach the next generation as my life depends on it, passing the torch on, even in my own nonprofit, South Florida Village, which gives an opportunity for students to get mentorship, also work with them on um, employability skills, college scholarships, um, college readiness, all of those things that students need to do to get ready for college because I recognize that in order for students to be successful or in order for the next generation to be successful, you have to start with those bases. So similar to what Mr. Martin said in terms of his you know, goals and missions, same thing that I do with um, you know, South Florida Village and same thing that I do even on the campus of, of Broward College and all of the different organizations that I'm involved in is to give back and give back unselfishly because this is my time to shine because 
my ancestors and forefathers have done their time and it's now my responsibility to give that on to the next generation, which is this generation. Why I'm on this call with you, which is to charge you with what is going to be your goal and your vision and your mission to begin to make this world a better place than where you came in when you leave here. And if not now, then when? And if you, then who? And of course, as my you know famous fraternity brother, you know John Lewis, you know you want to get in some good trouble. You know, and that good trouble means getting yourself involved in organizations like B2L and all other organizations that are truly involved in changing America for the better for all people so that people that look like me, people who don't look like me are able to say, you know what, this is the America that when our forefathers said all men are created equal or this is a society for all people to be successful, that's what it truly means we could be successful here and only through an education that we can do that. And so I try to do my part, which is to impart that knowledge to young people and try to give them as much information because what you find and what you realize is that if you studied American history is that movements of changes have always happened on the backbones of young people. So sometimes you may say, hey, what can I do? All you need is you, and a few other friends that you may know, and of course, you know a lot of friends, of course, as young people, get them involved. Find something that you care about. It doesn't have to be something as simple as, hey, I'm serious about climate change, or I'm worried about what's happening you know, in my community. There needs to be a bump stop because people are speeding in my community. Whatever it may be, take that charge and begin to move forward with it. And so I give my students an opportunity to do many different things. I have them, volunteer with an organization, find an issue that you care about. I have them volunteer with that organization to get some practical experience. So you can't say you wanna deal with teenage pregnancy, okay, let's deal, find an organization that deals with teenage pregnancy. From there, then you gauge yourself in the research. So what's out there in the, in the literature? What are people saying about it? And then on top of that, then I have them do a public service announcement and a commercial. Something that's going to get you engaged in the process to bring awareness to the issue. And all of that, use social media, bring awareness, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever that may be, engage our community. Because how is it an issue if it may not be just an issue for you? It could be an issue for a lot of different people. So it begins to get you into this mode of, I am a change maker, I'm a person here who's gonna make this world a better place, not only just for me, but for others mm. or for people who are behind me. Because my goal is that when my day has, end, has come to an end, here on this side, I can be able to say that I've done my job and well done, um, faithful servant for your time here on earth, giving back to this community unselfishly. So that's what I do all day, every day um, in our community. So thank you. I, I'll open it up for questions as well, if there's Do any questions for me. Do Dr. Dr. Morris, well done, good and faithful servant. Yes, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, well done. Um, so so we're definitely gonna lean on you for um, more of these conversations, especially diving into uh, American history and, and how that's kind of uh, transcended uh, the original intention of, of, like you said, all, all men being created equal um, and where we are today. And I think you're absolutely right. You know, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, they died at 39 years of age but mm -hmm. they, they started at a young age especially Martin, you know, martin luther you know they started at a young age but they died at a young age they weren't even 40. put right. things in perspective everyone i'm 36. <laughs> let's right. put that in right. perspective um right. for for the sake of time we're going to hold off on questions here we'll, we'll try to keep these questions towards the end dr morris if you don't mind but thank you again for your uh explanation and your purpose um uh, students if you have questions i'll tell you what if you have questions drop them in the chat we want to be mindful of the time your time um and, you know everyone's kind of zoomed out so thank you again uh dr morris and we will definitely be hearing more from you more from paul students next up uh, we have another speaker here. Again, we have, we, we told you we're bringing three um, incredible speakers. Next up, we have Shaba Kojo. Uh, a, okay, again, an amazing community leader. These are all folks that are working hard in our community. Uh, we, were, we were introduced to Shaba thanks to our good friends at uh, CSC, Children's Services Council. Uh, Adama suggested Shaba as a facilitator and trainer of racial 
Equity and Social Justice for our Youth-Led Advisory Council. I'm, I'm actually bowing my head. I can't thank you enough for joining us. Uh, we could use all the perspectives and wisdom as possible. Uh, he does this work extensively. So I'm really excited uh, to introduce Shaba today. And I'm also excited to point out the MPC that he has in the background. I don't know what series that is, but uh, I do know <laughs> I've, I'm quite familiar with uh, musical instruments. So welcome aboard, Shaba. Pleasure to have you. Greetings. Greetings, everyone. Is my volume good? Perfect. Awesome. <clears throat> Elijah Muhammad said that of all the things a man can study, history is best qualified to reward his research, our research. Malcolm X would later add to that, and it would, he would say, this is because this is the, gives us the wellspring in order to understand people's motives and actions over time. Uh, one of Malcolm X's historians or researchers was uh, Dr. John Henry Clark, and he puts it this way. He says, history is not everything, but it's a starting point. History is a clock that people use to tell their political and cultural time of day. It is a compass they use to find themselves on the map of human geography. It tells them where they are, but more importantly, what they must be. And this is what I've dedicated the last 15 years of my life to, studying African history, African worldview, African perspective, what I call African cultural history. Um, the African story has been left off of the world stage of history. And so we continue to find ourselves as a footnote or a side note in other people's stories, particularly in American history or European history. We find ourselves as a conquered people. And until we can get back to studying our own history from our own historians, from our own perspective, from our own research, we will continue to find ourselves not knowing who we are and contributing to other people's story as well as other people's power. Mm -hmm. One of my teachers, Baina Bello says, when they mess up with your history, they mess up with your mind. I'm pretty sure everyone on this call has an understanding of the difference between African history and the history that they learn in the American school system. There is a huge gap, a huge problem in honest African history. And oftentimes students don't find themselves given the opportunity to learn about history until they reach higher level college courses, 300 and 400 level college courses if they're studying Africana studies. Uh, my aim is to change this. My aim is to bring true African cultural history to first graders, to kindergartners, all the way up through high school, so that by the time they get to college, they're more equipped to help the professors understand the true history of, of Africa, as opposed to learning African history in upper level college courses. So, I mean, outside of that, I, I'll just kind of pin if anyone has any questions, but this is what, I, again, I've been doing for the last 15 years. I'm here dedicated to the students, students of African descent, to help you regain your story from your cultural perspective. Um, there is a point of view that Africa has that we do not know. And we do not know because we do not study it, because we're not afforded the opportunity to do so. So hopefully I can help to fill that gap and start you all on your mission to regain your history and your cultural point of view. Uh, the, the only thing I can say is um, sign me up. I'm interested. I'm definitely going to be uh, a front seat student, front seat listener. Um, wow, that's all I can say, guys. Uh, do we have any questions for Shaba? Again, um, Shaba is going to be facilitating our January racial equity meeting. So you want to tell your friends, uh, for those of you that want to dive into some, some really good conversation, uh, walk away with some great information and resources and some study guides, uh, please join us in January. We're picking up right where we left off in January. Anyone have any questions for Shaba?
And at the same time, I'll open I the floor to Dr. Morris as well. Yes, go for it. Hi, my name is Linda, and I wanted to know, like, do, do you have any recommendations for any books or any place where we can start learning more about our African history? Because I would love to know where to start. So what book do you have now? Not any. Just, ha like, if you have any recommendations. Absolutely. Um, you can start with the miseducation of the Negro. You can start with uh, Stolen Legacy. Okay. Uh, these There's also books. a book, if you want to look at all of African American history, you also need to do Freedom on My Mind, which is an um, anthology of all of African, African American history. And of course, there's a book by John Hope Franklin as well, another great historian as well. And then Michelle Alexander has a new book called The New Jim Crow. That's a great book as well. Thank you. Thank you for asking that question. Uh, do we have any other questions for any of our speakers before we move on? I think we're right on time when it comes to scheduling. Any other questions? I have a question. Yes. What inspired you to start teaching about African American history? Like what actually inspired you to get start digging deeper into it? What inspired me was learning. Um, I didn't originally endeavor to teach. Uh, teaching came as something that I was compelled to do after learning. Um, what inspired my learning was depression, anxiety, um, the recognition of continued real-time racism and oppression, and starting to understand what um, W.E. Du Bois said about having to live a dual consciousness and about the African being the problem in America. And as an adult in the business world, living that and being sickened by it drove me to research. And as a result of researching, I was compelled to find an area where I could share that research, which is teaching. And thank you very much for that question. Um, who was it who asked the question? I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. That was Layla, I think. Layla? Yeah, that was Layla. Layla, thank you so much, Layla. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, thank you to our, our guest speakers who are going to work with us. These folks, these, these men are here with B2L. Uh, they're going to work with us throughout the, uh, the course of next year in many different forms and capacities. So you'll have another opportunity to engage with them. And as you can see, we have some really deep conversations, deep dives that are going to happen coming up soon. Bring your friends along with you. Um, and then also we have opportunities. Again, all of these individuals have created their own brand. How can you mimic those brands? How can you follow in their footsteps in terms of what not to do, what to do, right? And, and, and this definitely falls in line with the projects that we assign y'all, um, you know, month in and month out. So thank you to Paul Martin. Thank you to Dr. Robert Morris. Thank you to Shaba Kojo for joining us. Uh, and we can't wait to have more conversation. Uh, if you're available, please stick around for the remainder of this meeting. If not, we completely understand. But again, thank you for joining us. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Um, moving right along, uh, we have some racial equity homework. Remember, we gave this to you um, some time ago. And uh, it's, it's, it's that time now. And as of right now, we have Yawanda, uh, who's leading the way. She will lead the way and explain the assignment and how, um, you know, how she answered it. Uh, but we do want to hear from others. We want to encourage you to dive into these, this homework. This homework is essential for your learning. It's essential for the learning and, and empowerment of your peers as well, right? So uh, we have examples of that. Let's hear from Yawanda. I think we're going to hear from Yawanda now. I just want to make sure. Uh, let's hear from Yawanda. Yawanda, are you available? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, Yawanda, I'm going to pass the floor to you. Before I do that, um, you see we have on the screen examples of racial societal labeling. So that's what Yawanda is going to talk about. That was the homework. Um, she's the only one that did it, but I'm sure after today's meeting, <laughs> we're going to have some others do that. And remember, I can't impress upon you the importance of doing these student-led projects. I'm going to make a big announcement in about 10 minutes, so get ready. Biggest announcement we've ever made in, in B2L history. Yawanda, the floor is yours. Hi, my name is Yawande, and um, I'm going to talk about some of the things 
I found about social racial labeling. The phrase social racial labeling is arguably ambiguous, but this is how I interpreted it. So racial labeling is all around us, whether it be on a job application, the US Census, or a school student completing a mandatory school form, and individuals always ask about their race, white, black, Asian, Pacific Islander, Native American, et cetera, et cetera. The installation of the concept of a racial hierarchy has thus resulted in institutionalized racism that impacts so many in America. Racial labels have changed over time, for example, for Blacks, from colored and Negro to Black and African Americans, which is good because it shows a shift in societal beliefs. However, there are also many harmful stereotypes and derogatory terms connected to many races. That's not to say that the elimination of racial labeling will be beneficial and end racism. As someone who is Black, I find race very important. It connects me to my culture, my family, and it brings me pride. But I do think that we can all practice more mindfulness as well as educate ourselves and our friends. Equity, which is supporting those that are at, an, at a disadvantage in our society, is a gateway to achieve, for the most part, equality. Yolanda, thank you so much for your homework. So tell me, let me ask you one question and then I'm gonna open the floor to other questions. Pierce, we're looking to hear from you. Um, so Yolanda, how did you, Yolanda, how did you start your homework? What, what sources did you go to first? Where, where did you find those particular labels? How, how did you start this? Okay, so first, first I looked up societal labeling because when you look at societal labeling is more of an umbrella and then we have race, we have sexuality, we have things like that. So first I looked up social, I mean, sorry, social labeling. And then I looked more into racial labelings. And the main example that I found was the US census. And that's how I kind of developed my thought process on what social racial labeling really was. And then I started to think of my own experiences and I started to look up things based on those experiences, such as derogatory terms and stereotypes. Thank you so much, Yawande. Uh, so uh, once again, please make sure to meet with us in January because we're gonna dive into a little bit more of this uh, with our guest speaker, Shaba. Before we go any further, uh, there is a really cool video that, that I wanna show you guys, that we wanna show you here from B2L. We have it queued up, if it's ready, let's go on ahead and hit play and uh, sit back, relax and watch this video. Coded Bias is the title, Coded Bias. So if we're ready, uh, let's hit play and let's watch it. Here we go. During my first semester at MIT, I got computer vision software that was supposed to track my face. It didn't work until I put on this white mask. I'm thinking, all right, what's going on here? Is it the lighting conditions? Is it the angle at which I'm looking at the camera? Or is there something more? That's when I started looking into issues of bias that can creep into technology. Our ideas about technology that we think are normal are actually ideas that come from a very small and homogeneous group of people. Vast amounts of data at incredible speeds. Everybody has unconscious biases and people embed their own biases into technology. This kid got stopped as a result of facial recognition misidentification and then used that as justification to search you. This is an innocent child. Racism is becoming mechanized. Systemic issues are only going to be hardwired into new technologies. It's not just face classification, it's any data-centric technology. Every day we are all being scored who gets hired, who gets housing. I am making predictions for your life right now. The people who own the code deploy it on other people, and there is no accountability. Management at Atlantic Towers wanted to install the facial recognition software. Pretty much turn this place into Fort Knox. The technology is being rapidly adopted, and there are no safeguards. We are socially controlled in a way that we don't see. technology that analyzes faces could be biased, but the company is pushing it anyway. What demographic is it most effective on? White men. Show me that it's going to be fair, that it's legal, before you put it out. That's what we don't have yet. 
It's going to take people coming together, driving for justice in this age of automation. There is coded bias. There is bias in technology that we probably haven't even noticed. And uh, this film seeks to dive into uh, to exactly what that looks like, what it entails. And it is yet another opportunity for us to come back together, discuss this, and then pass the information along. I think uh, both Shaba and uh, Dr. Morris mentioned that, um, and Paul Martin, to a certain extent, we they mentioned passing the information on. Don't just keep it to yourself. Share it with others. That's how you grow your community. So please check out that film. Check out Coded Bias. Um, I'm definitely going to watch it as soon as possible. Uh, and we want you to watch it as well. So uh, we'll go back to just any other uh, questions for Yawande. Thank you so much for that uh, presentation. Any other questions for Yawande? Okay, going once, going twice. Thank you very much, Yawande. We greatly appreciate it. And again, next January, join us. Uh, Shaba's going to uh, conduct the meeting, facilitate a meeting with us. We'll, deep, we'll dive into some really good conversation there, meaningful conversation. We're not just talking to talk, we're talking uh, to make calls to action. So thank you very much. Let's move on. We have some more information for you. Uh, Student-led projects. This is our goal every month. We want to highlight the progress on student-led projects at different stages, right, of, in the process. So we want you to come up with your own. We're asking you guys, we're begging you, please come up with your own. Um, and then how can we help you? How can you help your peers? What are you passionate about? How can you make a difference? So we're gonna look at two examples of student-led projects. I think you've heard of one uh, already, uh, but we're gonna see what kind of progress we're at now. Where do we stand with that, right? And then also after they're done, there's an announcement I'm going to explain why doing this kind of work matters. A huge announcement. Again, stay around for it, I promise you. I promise you. So let's get started with Sarah Westner. She is the lead of HALT and she has some other speakers on that are going to join us and give us some updates, progress updates. So Sarah, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Hi, I won't be doing all the talking today, guys, but I have some of my team members here. I have Najee Thomas. He's my vice president and he's also the head of science. And today he's here to tell you about the contributions him and his beginning sections of his team are making. Hello, everyone. Give me one second as I turn on the camera. Okay, can you guys see me clearly? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. All right, so hello, everyone, my, um, and good afternoon. My name is Najee Thomas. I'm Holt's Vice President and the Head of Science. So basically, my primary science curriculum is designed to develop fundamental knowledge, skills, and attitudes towards science through firsthand experiences and to implement a greater awareness in the role of science in everyday life. My main goal for every student is to be able to explain and acknowledge the fundamental biological processes such as metabolism, homeostasis, reproduction, and so much more. And if this is a program for you, I highly recommend you to join. If there is any questions. All right, if there's no questions for Najee, I, um, next I we have-, have a question. Oh yeah, okay. go ahead. Will there be any study of melanin in your in your course? It wasn't initially brought up, but it definitely can be. If we're talking more about like the anatomy of the integumentary system, we could definitely talk about um, pigmentation for sure. All right, if there's no more questions for Najee. I have a question. Go ahead. Your science department, is it mostly focused on then life science and biology? So we are, um, so I divide it into three core sciences, including biology, chemistry, and um, physics. Sorry, not psychology, but physics. Thank you. No problem. Any more questions? All right, we will be hearing from Rebecca Valentine, which is HALT's secretary, and also she is the head of history. Rebecca, you can continue. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Rebecca. It's nice to, it's my pleasure to be speaking to you all. 
Um, I go to ATC. I'm a junior currently. I'm the, as Sarah said, I'm the um, secretary and head of the history department at Holtz. Um, the history department strives to help auditory, visual, reading, learn, reading, writing, and can say learners master um, topics they struggle with in history. So um, for the auditory learners, we plan on giving them music and videos to watch to help them um, learn um, on what they're struggling with. Um, for the visual learners, we plan on giving them mind maps. And if you don't know what mind maps are, they're diagrams that connect um, different topics into one. And for the kinesthetic learners, um, we're planning on having virtual reality. So when we get that up, we're planning to do something with that. And for the reading and writing learners, um, we plan on giving them notes so they can study from. And I hope you join Hall and I plan and I hope I see you very soon. Um, thank you. Any questions for Rebecca? All right, if there's um if there's no questions, uh, this is this might be my project, but it is my team's dream. It's not just Rebecca Najin here today. I have some of my team, like I have Sharon Hyacinth, I have Howard Smith, and Yawanda is a part of Holt too. So if you guys really want to join in, I hope you do. We're just getting things moving. We plan to start each meeting with each department up in January. We have big things coming for everyone. And if you want to join, I drop the link inside the chat and I'll be free to drop it again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sarah. It looked like you were still talking and now you're screen. Okay, good. Okay, good. We're caught up now. Thank you so much, Sarah, Naji, Rebecca. Greatly appreciate it. This is a great example of uh, teens working together, peers working together, future leaders, current shakers and movers. That's what I'm talking about. So thank you all very much for working together. Shaba, I got the question. I got the question. Thank you. Um, we're going to move right along to Layla. Layla has um, a presentation that she's worked on, Peer Friend Network. Layla, if you are available, go on ahead and unmute. We want to make sure we can hear you. Hello, can you see me and can you hear me? We can hear you. Let me see. Can I see you? Can anyone else see Layla? Yes, we can see you. You're good to go. Okay. Um, let me go ahead and fix this. Okay, so my project is called the Peer Friend Network. What is Peer Friend Network? Peer Friend Network would be a multimedia line available to middle and high school students who need that friend to talk to. It will be made up from your own peers who wish to help and guide others who are dealing with social and academic issues. Our objectives. Our objectives are to give out help and assistance to peers who need someone to talk to, whether it's about friends, family, or even school. We also want to assist students academically, referring them and giving them our sources so that they can help them succeed, as well as give one-on-one -on -one tutoring. This includes helping students in our county and beyond, making sure everyone feels like they have a safe space and guiding students to the resources that they need to thrive and succeed. What we can provide. We can provide academic resources like one-on-one -on -one tutoring, references to officials who can help you take that extra step further and more. For social issues, we can be that person to talk to, whether it be about how you're feeling towards school or if it's something that you just need to get off your chest and everyone remains anonymous. The resources we will use are tutors, brace advisors, guidance counselors, and other youth-led organizations and you. An example, that you might be thinking of is what if we get a call or somebody reaches out to us that has a mental health issue or is dealing uh, with those type of issues. We know that we're not trained to deal with those type of issues and we're not professionals, but we will refer you to someone who can give you the help that you need and can take you that extra step. Our next steps, network recruitment, growing our social media pages, self-promotion and building our personal team. A little bit about me. My name is Layla Melvin. I am a junior at Blanche Ely High. I hope to have a career in biomedical engineering and I am 16 years old. And then there should have been one more slide. I don't know if it was there. It was like all of our social media handles and stuff so that you guys can follow. 
um, Layla, if you have those social media handles, could you drop those in the chat? If you have them, go ahead and put those in the chat, please. Yep, okay. Thank you so much, Layla. Um, again, an amazing project that our students are working on, you guys are working on, future leaders, current shakers and movers. Um, and Layla, I, I can't tell you enough how, how uh, important, how paramount it is uh, to have peer-to-peer -peer counseling, peer-to-peer -peer mentoring, and just you know, peers working with peers in general, whatever the case may be. Um, how are we gonna move forward if we can't talk to one another? How are we gonna move forward if we're not in each other's corner and supporting them? Um, so that's huge, Layla, huge. Thank you so much for working on that. Uh, there goes the social media handles. So yeah. everyone take a look at them, please. And uh, let's take about 10 seconds right now to follow. If you are on Instagram, please, right this second, follow the peer, friend network and you got you actually got that handle that's amazing so there weren't any other handles to, called peer for net that's a uh, peer friend network so let's follow peer friend network right now on instagram i need everyone who has a phone in instagram follow them now rebecca did you follow them already are you already following peer peer friend network i, I know i call rebecca i just called you out rebecca if you have instagram please follow them right now okay all right layla any any questions for layla um, also, as a little side note, I'm dropping the link um, to join a peer friend network in the chat also. Okay, we got someone saying following. Thank you so much. Sarah, I see you're unmuted. Go for it. Oh, I don't have a, I don't have a question for Layla, but I do have a comment because she's in Holt too. So for me to see her have her own, you know, um, little project going on, I, I like to be as proud of her because I know the work she's doing for Holt and now that she's doing this, I would love to support her through it too. Sarah, we, we all know that you are super you supportive so of your team and friends. Layla, thanks you. We thank you, Layla. Any other questions for Layla? Okay, just want to make sure. All right, and everyone is following Peer Friend Network. Just want to make sure. All right, cool, cool. Let's move on with our agenda. Again, we always want to be mindful of the time, your time. Uh, I know a lot of you are probably Zoomed out. Um, but, but these things matter, these things work, right? So that's why we want you to do this. Um, and, and in about two minutes, I'm gonna talk about something that pertains specifically to those student projects and why everybody, and I'm really encouraging everyone uh, to, to work on a student project. But first, um, there's a huge conference coming up in February, February 4th and February 5th. It's called the YouTuber Conference. So we've noticed that a lot of students are interested in becoming digital content creators, right? You see it all over YouTube, all over socials. So we wanted to dive into that a little bit more. Um, we're gonna talk about monetization, right? How to make money from your YouTube channel, how to grow your YouTube channel. Um, how does YouTube work exactly in the advertisement? Some of you probably already know this from looking at YouTube, but uh, to help us, we're actually gonna to have some successful YouTubers on with us. So we'll start with our featured guests so far, so far. Uh, for those that are familiar with Minecraft, we have Moosecraft who's gonna join us on February 5th. Uh, Moosecraft has about 5 million subscribers on YouTube. I'll say that again, 5 million subscribers on YouTube. Uh, next up, we have Big Ja, huge comedian out of Los Angeles, California. Um, uh, some of his stuff isn't uh, age appropriate for children, just wanna throw that out there. Uh, but um, he has tons of followers on social media, 13 million, and he's got about 3 million subscribers on YouTube. Destroying, he's huge amongst our athletes uh, here in America, here in uh, Florida. He's actually from Pensacola, Florida, but he travels nationwide and even worldwide to talk about um, the importance of athletic training and pre preparation. We also have Daryl from Vid Summit. Vid Summit is a huge nationwide event that happens. Uh, it's I think this was their first or second Vid Summit um, conference. He's going to talk a little bit more about monetization, how to make money from this thing and plenty others. I'm not gonna go through the list of who we're also trying to get, but trust me, we have some big names that we're reaching for. Should I tell them? I'll just tell them. Denzel Washington's one of the big names that we're reaching for. Hey, you never know, you never know. You don't know unless you ask, right? So make sure to follow, make sure to, to uh, read your text messages. We're gonna be sending out text and remind messages about the YouTube conference. Spread the word. There will be a YouTube video competition at the end. I don't know if it's gonna be a hundred dollar gift card, if it's gonna be 250, 500, I don't know, but there will be an opportunity to make some money at the end of the YouTuber conference and during 
the YouTuber conference. We're giving out several raffle chat, uh, several chat raffles throughout the uh, each night. Um, it could be five, it could be 10 raffles, it could be 10, 20, 30, I don't know how much, but it's going to be money in your pocket. We promise you that. So February 4th, February 5th, let's move on to the big announcement that I've been talking about all day. Um, as you see here, Rise. Rise finds extraordinary young people who need opportunity and supports them for life as they use their talents to serve others. Okay, what does that mean? This is for 15 through 17 year old youth. This is why student led projects like the ones that Sarah's working on, Najee, Rebecca, Layla. This is why projects like those are so important. This is why they matter. B2L's team, Listen, before we go into any further discussion, I want to look at a video that's going to dive a little bit more into this, and then I'll talk about some specific numbers. This is why we want you guys to work on these projects. This is why. So let's take a look at the video, and then I'll be back in about two seconds. And we don't have any volume. Just want to let you know, B2L team, there we go. Giving free education to every child present in this world, irrespective of the background they come from, the gender they have, the race they have. I really want to address the problem of climate change because it's so important to my generation. One fourth of the population, so 15 million people, don't have access to the internet. And by preventing residents from reliably accessing government relief programs and online schooling. As someone who has experienced homelessness myself, I know its devastating impact. And while it is an overwhelming issue, I have learned the importance of studying small in order to work towards creating a solution. We live in a well, we are so many people only care about their own happiness. We forget to worry about the people around us. That is why I am happy that I am an empathetic person in my community, because the world needs as many of us as we can get. Once we can accept our differences and diversities, we will be, as the human race, stronger and more prosperous than ever before. We should tap into the strength of one another and make the world a better place. The power to change things comes from bringing ideas together and using them to create an best and inclusive solution. Rise is an opportunity to connect with exceptional young people from around the world and bring your talents together to develop fresh ideas, new thinking, and new approaches to old problems. It will help provide you the support you need to bring your ideas to life, including scholarships, career services, and membership in a global community. Please apply. We need your gifts and your talents. We're counting on you. The world is counting on you. I am so proud to be part of this new blooming generation, and we are going to rise. All right, perfect, perfect. So we're, we're going to encourage everyone uh, to apply. We actually have someone on the line who has applied or on the, in the uh, meeting who has applied. And I'm going to put her on the spot really quick. Sarah, um, you applied to the uh, RISE application. Sarah's like, oh, yeah, she put me on the spot. You applied to the, uh, to the RISE, we're going to say scholarship, correct? I did. OK, so um, Sarah, I want you to think about, before I ask you this question, I want you to think about the process that you went through, what, what stage you're in now. And then um, when I come back to you, I'm gonna ask you to tell us about those two questions, right? Those two pieces. Before I do that, does anyone, does anybody know who the couple at the end were? Does anyone know? Anyone know? If you know who they were, just drop their names in the chat if you know who they were. I'll give you five more seconds. I'll give you five more seconds. Okay, two, one. They are former Google CEO. Google CEO, Eric Schmidt and his wife, Wendy. All right, guess who, guess how much money they have committed to this project? I want, to, I want everyone to just take a wild guess. Everyone take a wild guess as to how much money they've committed to this pro project. Just take a wild guess and drop it in the chat. Really quick, really quick. We're almost at an hour, we can, we can pull through this. Guess how much money they've committed to this? Okay, we have a couple we have a couple numbers coming in. Okay, I'll tell you. 1 billion with a B. 
one billion dollars has been committed to this project and even better this is for lifetime financial support i repeat lifetime financial support here's the importance about getting resources when you get those resources the question then becomes what do you do with them well you'll have a lifetime of support from this project and there's many other projects out there but i'm not going to go into more detail sarah tell us what kind of process did you go through and where are you at now when i first receive the information about rise i was like okay it's just gonna be you know a couple of things you know you make the video and you get it and when i went on the app i saw there were so many more organizations it's not just rise rise is the big one of course because what they are doing if you go into the app and you read the description what they're trying to do is you go through like this process then you get shortlist uh shortlisted and then you know once you make it they fund you for life i'm talking if you need it if you need the one billion for school it's for school if you need it to pay your house because your family can't they're going to do that for you they'll take care of everything for you with that one billion through life and the one that i got shortlisted for is called the ivy house and i had my first meeting with my advisor she's the leader of my cohort and she told me basically that out of the 30 people it's 10 people per cohort and there's only three out of the 30 people chosen it's about 10 people in america i would say and then the rest are all out overseas so being one of those 10 people chosen in america alone i don't even know how many more in florida mind you so being one of those 10 people in america i say it's pretty big but it's only up from here i have a lot of work to do ahead of me and i went on the app just the other day and three more organizations popped up so get out there and do these projects people are listening and people are willing to fund you guys Sarah, thank you so much. And you, you just kind of stole my thunder. Um, this is one of the reasons why we've been encouraging you, um, uh, B2L students, youth, future leaders, um, shakers and movers. This is why we've been encouraging you to do these student projects because there are companies, there are people in positions higher than ours that are looking for endeavors and initiatives such as the ones that you're working on, Sarah, such as the ones that you're working on, Layla, Najee, Rebecca. So other peers that are listening, take the opportunity work on your project i don't even care if the project's not even complete work on it get it to a point where you can present it and enter this competition enter this opportunity for a lifetime full of support one billion dollars again think about what you can do with that money yes you can focus on housing and making sure you have money for the future but also developing your project working on other projects becoming an entrepreneur with that money turning that into three billion who knows the possibilities are endless and we don't have enough time to go into them today but throughout the course of spring semester we will um so that's why we've been asking you to work on these. The deadline is, this is very important, the deadline is January 29th. January 29th. Get your projects defined right now. I told you this is the biggest news we've had since we've, <laughs> since we've been having these SSM meetings. Um, and we would love to say, look at what our B2L students have accomplished. You know, just bragging right. Sarah, I see you unmuted. Um just some quick you know advice when you go there they're just gonna ask you like to make some videos of yourself it's don't you won't be able to say your name and stuff like that so you know they don't know who you are where you live until you know you actually get accepted but when you make your video be look comfortable look confident sound like yourself like there's literally one on the app right now where it's just like tell me about yourself and the second step is to make a two minute video that makes them laugh and it's a $5,000 scholarship to any college you want and they just pay it for you. They send you the check themselves. And you know, the January 29th is just for the rise one, but there's other ones with other deadlines. Like there's one, it ends today. There's another deadline that is tomorrow. So, you know, you're, you still have time to make it. It's never too late for these. Sarah, thank you so much. All right, you heard it from your peers. Uh, you heard it from, from Sarah. She's doing this as we speak. So uh, I hope everyone, and when I say everyone, I mean everyone who's listening and those that we're gonna be chatting with through Remind, I hope everyone takes advantage of this opportunity. So thank you very much, Sarah, for uh, giving us some more explanation as to what you've experienced thus far. And um, there it is. We're, we're gonna continue to push y'all to do great things.
Let's move on with our agenda. We're a little over four o'clock. Uh, we usually meet for about an hour. Uh, sometimes we go an hour and 30. Um, upcoming event, we have the HBCU College Fair, uh, which will run January 19th through the 28th. 32 colleges are going to be in attendance and there may be an opportunity for waivers for the Common App and Black Common App for those that are interested in going to an HBCU. Uh, again, waivers for the application portion of your admissions process. So make sure you sign up. You'll get more information about that. You'll probably hear from your Brace Cadets as well. Um, and then uh, the registration details are coming soon. All right. So more information coming on that. Please check your Remind apps and please con contact with your Brace Cadets. Also, the um, FAFSA challenge for October is complete, right? That's that our, our FAFSA challenge is done for October. And we hope that um, we hope to have more challenges in the future, possibly before the March deadline, more information to come on that. But again, seniors, make sure you're telling your peers, your other peers, uh, you know, at other schools, complete the FAFSA application. It makes no sense to have uh, this free money floating around. Remember, we, we quoted $2.9 billion went unclaimed in grants and loans last year unacceptable when there are resources out there for everybody and somebody I always run into someone who says well I didn't know no one told me we're telling you now so you can't say no one ever told you so um, so make sure that you take advantage of this uh, through November 13th seniors in Broward County have completed 6.1 percent fewer applications but don't worry because we're actually leading the charge in the, in the state of Florida and uh, Florida is not doing so bad <laughs> um, but Conservatively, over $2 million in Pell Grant funding can be attributed to submission to date. So make sure you complete your FAFSA application. We will update you as soon as we have more information on another potential FAFSA challenge. I'd definitely like to do one next year. Um, we're moving right along to the next slide. Near-term opportunities. We always give you an opportunity to make some more money. Uh, B2L Youth-Led Racial Equity Advisory Council. Sign up for the January 15th meeting monetary incentives are available for leadership involvement. Once you sign up, we'll give you more details, but sign up. If you're not that comfortable talking about this, sign up anyway, right? Because this is something you're gonna be faced with your entire life, no matter what race culture you're from, uh, this conversation is going to come up. Why not tackle it now or get a better understanding of it now? Number two, B2L youth spokespeople, youth-led projects, HALT, uh, peer friend network. We need more of those. I, I've already spent a good deal of time talking about that. And if you're not motivated by the rise opportunity, then I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, number three, YouTube video competition. Uh, when the YouTuber conference kicks off, uh, it's, it's going to be major. We want you to be a part of that. Another opportunity to make money at the end of the competition and during the competition. Uh, so we're trying to put money in your pockets so you can do whatever, give you resources, right? Last but not least, B2L social media and website support. Um, Colleen, I'm going to spend a few, a few seconds here if you don't mind a few minutes here um, we need your help uh, I am I mentioned it earlier I'm 36 years of age I grew up with technology but I am not interested in social media as much as I probably should be with that being said a lot of your peers use social media on a daily basis as a matter of fact I heard a quote one day a stat one day students between the ages of 12 to 21 send 50,000 words via text a day 50,000 words via text a day. You know, just think about that. Some of these scholarship applications only ask for 300, 400 word essays. And some of y'all are sending 50,000 words via text a day. Amazing. So you're, you're constantly on social media. We need your help. If you are interested in joining our social media website support team, please put your name in the chat right this second. We need help from you. Um, there may be some volunteer hours coming in the near future. Again, more monetary incentives, as you can see. That's why we're talking about these near-term opportunities. Uh, so we need your assistance with that. We won't take much time out of your week. We get it. Your students, you're busy, right? But we need your help. So uh, did we get anyone who said they want to be a part of this? I just want to double check. I like to do an aggressive push whenever I ask this. Did we get anyone who said they want to be a part of it? Anyone? No one yet? No one yet? Okay, we're waiting. We're waiting. I need at least one person to say they want to join. I'm going to push for at least one. We need one person to join. And uh, y'all know I'm going to continue to do this until somebody. All right, we got Linda. That's what I'm talking about. I'm, I feel better now. I feel better now. I feel better. Um, so we have amazing students signed up. Okay, okay Kiefer, thank you. Okay, great. 
Linda and Kiefer, awesome, awesome. Um, do we have anybody else? Let's just make it a solid three, right? Let's make it a solid three. For those from the uh, church background, you've heard of the term Trinity, I'm sure. Let's just make it a solid three. Solid three. Okay, Grace. That's what I'm talking about. Benjamin, that's what I'm talking about. We got four. All right, I got to push it to a round of number five. Oh, there we go. Katrina, you knew I was going to push it to five. Thank you so much. We have our team ready. And this opportunity is available. If anybody else wants to join, we're here. We're not going anywhere. B2L is here to stay. Um, so those are the near-term opportunities. B2L team, I hope that we got those names. Let's reach out to them as soon as possible. You'll be hearing from us. Uh, we have one of our, uh, our leads, our social media lead, graphic designer lead, and all of the above. Carolina Lopez is on the line. So you'll be in close contact with her. Again, yet another network opportunity. Put the dots together, put the pieces together. All right, so thank you very much, everyone, for, uh, for signing up. And uh, just final thoughts. As we enter this holiday season, keep in mind those who are less fortunate, obviously, uh, continue to be supporters of your peers, continue to be supporters of each other, and just know B2L is here if you need us in any way. Big shout out to our speakers that joined us today. Big shout out to Shaba Kojo. Thank you so much for joining us. Big shout out to Paul Martin. Thank you so much for joining us. Big shout out to my fellow BC colleague, Dr. Robert Morris, for joining us. And even bigger shout out to our students who led projects and who are engaged in a lot of these opportunities. We're, we, I can't tell you how happy I am and how proud of, proud of you I am for doing that. Keep up the great work. Um, before we close, does anyone have any final thoughts, any questions, any comments, any upcoming events that you'd like to push or present? Uh, if not, then we will close out. Any, anyone have anything, we'll unmute. And speakers as well, if you have anything else that you'd like to add, anything at all. And uh, if not, then we'll go on ahead and end from here. Okay, we'll give it about 10 seconds. Okay, all right. Okay, well, with that being said, happy holidays, enjoy your break. Um, I'm not taking a break. I'm, there's more work to do for me. Denzel Washington once said hard work works. So I got more work to do. Enjoy your break. Thank you everyone for joining. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you next year. Come on 2021. You too. Oh, bye. 21. Thank you, Tron. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice Thank day. Holidays. Have a good day. Holidays. Have a good day. Have a great day. Have a great Happy day. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Shaba, thank you again. You were wonderful. We'll be in touch. Bye.